Ralston. You're not going to go on public record saying, yeah, I paid 10,000 lira to watch a girl have sex with a dog at Garibaldi's shows. He was doing this. Absolutely no one was going to testify against Garibaldi because it would mean admitting that they had been part and parcel to this supporting this, this pervert circus. So Garibaldi was going to walk free except there was one further form of justice that could be enacted upon him, justice from the grave, because his ex-wife, his ex-wife decided if the courts wouldn't go after him, she would take matters into her own hand. She started appearing to Garibaldi at night and attacking him. His, her ghost would come into his room at night and start physically trying to assault him. Garibaldi sought out a local priest, telling him, look, my ex-wife is dead and she's stalking me, she's trying to get me, I need some help, I need an exorcism, I need some protection from the church against whatever this demonic thing is that my wife, my dead wife has become. She would come into his room, throw things at his head, and fly around in the corners of the room and strike the man, and so he needed protection from the church. The church would not protect him, however, because they knew that Garibaldi was a bad guy. Garibaldi fled to Syracusa, thinking, well, if I get out of Palermo, maybe she can't follow me. i got to get out of the city of Palermo. So he went to Syracusa, where his family had lived, hoping to escape the, the ghost of his ex-wife, but the ghost followed him there, too. Garibaldi's brother reported that from his room at night he could hear him screaming and he could hear voices in the room fighting and screaming and sound, sounds of things crashing. So he thought, sought out a priest in Syracusa and told him the story as well, that his, his dead ex-wife was stalking him and the ghost was appearing to him and could the church please protect him? Could the power of God somehow prevent this demonic force from attacking him? The priest said, Garibaldi, I will help you but only if you make a full confession of your own misdeeds in relation to this girl that is causing this to happen. And Garibaldi absolutely refused. He would not admit any wrongdoing or any culpability because he was afraid the courts would find out and he would wind up as a witness against himself. So he absolutely refused to, to make a confession to the priest. He went home that night, but another night of suffering and another night of attacks from the ghost finally brought him to his knees, and he sought out the priest, and he was finally going to confess his own misdeeds to at least get the ghost to stop attacking him. It was the last time he was ever seen alive was that morning. He told his family he was going to the church, and he was finally going to make a full confession. He left the house and went to the church, never seen alive again. Now... There are certain theories as to what happened to Garibaldi and how he wound up dead. The priest he went to see was not at the church when Garibaldi arrived. Garibaldi arrived in the morning, but it is known that the church that that the priest that day was late. He had opened the church, but had gone off to an appointment, and he only showed up at noon. And when he died, when he arrived, he found Garibaldi's body dead in the confessional booth. The theory is that Garibaldi had entered the confessional booth thought he was talking to the priest, confessed his sins, but it turned out the person on the other side was the ghost of his ex-wife, and finally, when she finally got the, co the, the confession out of him and the admission of his own misdeeds, she decided then and there to kill him. Now that at least she had gotten a confession out of the man, she would serve her own justice. Now, why, why would they think that his wife had something to do with this. Couldn't someone else have murdered Garibaldi other than the ghost of his wife? There is one telling fact, there's one bit of evidence that really points to this being the act of the ghost of his wife, because I said that Garibaldi was found dead in the confessional. He was found dead in the confessional, however, he was found in a certain way, in a certain posture. Mm -hmm. A candelabra had been shoved up his ass so far that it had caused internal hemorrhaging. Internal hemorrhaging, which killed him, which was exactly the same type of internal hemorrhaging as his wife had died from. So the theory goes that she had decided to do onto Garibaldi as he had done to her, and killed him through bludgeoning of his internal organs, through through sexual, <clears throat> whatever you want to call it, yeah. The golden candlestick rule, the golden candlestick right up the ass. So she, he had been found with a candelabra shoved up his ass all the way to his intestines, and he died of the exact same type of internal hemorrhaging and bleeding that she had died from previously. Now there were no other clues found to support the idea that the ghost was involved except for one. There was no eyewitness of what went on in the church, but there was someone in the city, a passerby, a woman who said mid-morning, around 10 a.m., 
She said she saw an unknown young woman in a tattered white dress that she had never seen before and didn't live in that neighborhood of Syracuse. She saw an unknown young woman in a tattered white dress leave the church. She was moving slowly, and she said her complexion was very white, a kind of deathly pallor. And as she walked by, she had this passerby said that this young woman, this unknown young woman, looked up at the woman and muttered one word, justizia, or an Italian justice. And be that as it may, I will... I think that that's probably enough sex ghost talk for us tonight because we have the wonderful folk songs of Dan Janish, and I think we have also our horror host, Mike Off. <laughs> <laughs>